and copy. You are in for a most exciting journey. A call like none other. the call. God calls people for his own purpose. He elects and ordains them before they are even born. And they are targeted by birth, from birth, by evil spirits that would try to stop them. Just so you know, God calls people into ministry, and some people call themselves into ministry. Some do good and some do bad. Some have good motives and some have bad motives. In Jeremiah, it says, God is saying, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But we all must know that everyone who says their call must give an account. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. So whether you have been truly called by God, or you have called yourself, or someone else has called you, your grandfather, your grandmother, or someone else, Acts 5, gives us a good scripture to keep us from judging one another. It says, refrain from these men or these people that think they are called and leave them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of man, it will come to nothing. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. So whether a man or a woman is called by God or they have called themselves, we have to let the Lord work that out. But here's for those that have the true calling. It says that God called us before we were even in the belly, before he formed us. And before we came out of the womb, he called and sanctified and ordained people to work for him, for his own purpose. In Romans 9, it tells us about, and that's what he spoke to Jeremiah. In Romans 9, it tells us about Jacob. Jacob and Esau. Esau was born first. But Jacob was chosen, called, for the children being not yet born, neither have done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. And so God does call people. He chooses certain people. It's nothing that they have done. It's nothing their grandfather did or their grandmother did. It's for God's own purpose. Before you were even born, before you have done any good or evil, nothing you've done to, to deserve this, not of works, but of him that calleth. For Jacob, he said, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee. Thou art mine. And truly, I will tell you the truly elect belong to God. From the moment they are birthed into this earth realm, they are targeted and attacked by evil spirits. But that will not call them because God has sanctified and ordained them before they were even born. Now, the word fear not, that's what gets me. To me, it means 
you're going to have cause to fear. And God wants you to know it. But he said, fear not. That's a biggie because when you have cause to fear, that doesn't mean you have to fear. And you will have cause to fear. If you're the truly elect, you're going to have cause to fear because the gates of hell is going to come against you, but they shall not prevail. So when they come against you, and they will, if you're truly elect, God says, fear not, for I am with you. When a person, when God, call, when God calls a person into ministry, all hell breaks loose against that person. And, and Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. So when you're chosen, you are ordained, preordained to bring forth fruit and that fruit should remain. That's not for those that choose the ministry for themselves. This is for those that God calls. People called by God suffer from childhood all the way to death from spiritual attacks. It goes with the call. We have ministers now that don't want to suffer. Well, this, they, they, they have probably called themselves because the true calling, suffering goes with it. Once the truly elect understand the call, it's just a matter of knowing who they are and whose they are. They understand purpose and Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The command of fear not is something that the called must periodically remind themselves of when the attacks become just almost too much. There are many times that the elect could have fallen and been in despair, and they do despair, but it's only momentarily. If not for those words, fear not. Hallelujah. The same command was given to me by Jesus, but he gave it to me in this manner. He visited me. I had a visitation from the Lord Jesus Christ. He comforted me and said to me, don't worry. I'll always take care of you. Jesus knew that I would have cause to worry, but he had already taken care of that with don't worry. I'll always take care of you. And I can't tell you the number of times I've had to bring those words back to my remembrance that Jesus spoke personally to me that day. And when I brought those words back in certain situations and circumstances, I just remember what Jesus said. Don't worry. I'll always take care of you. When I brought them back, they always, without exception, regrouped me every single time. The life of the truly call may be called to suffer persecution, but thank God they will be kept from the hour of great deception. Paul called to suffer persecution. In Acts 9 and 16, the Lord Jesus said about Paul, for I will show him great things. He must suffer for my name's sake. Jesus, we know how Jesus suffered. Arise, take the young child and his mother, the angel told Joseph, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. From his birth, the devil tried to destroy Jesus. And then Jacob, fear not, the Lord said, for I am with you, running from his brother who was disinherited and his father-in-law, conniving father-in-law Laban. But God told Jacob, fear not, for I am with you. So the elect that are called will suffer persecution, but they will be kept from the hour of great deception. Matthew 24, Jesus tells us, there shall, be, there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, 
and they shall show great signs and wonders in so much that these signs and wonders are so great that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I have heard people misquote that saying it's possible to, to deceive the very elect. Read the word of God. Don't take from it. Don't add to it. He said, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. But the very elect will not be deceived. Why? Because God himself reserves the elect for his own purpose, not from suffering, but from deception. Romans tells us that even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace, a very own people that God calls to himself for his own purpose. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want you to understand this call, this true call, the call of God. It says here in 2 Corinthians, we are troubled on every side. And like I said, there's some ministers, they don't want no trouble, they don't want this, that, and other. Well, then maybe perhaps someone else called you, but the call that God puts on you, you're going to be troubled on every side, yet not distressed. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and read about the call and why uh, we are troubled on every side. And then also with that, Isaiah tells us to not be dismayed. Why? Because in Isaiah 41, 10, it says he is with us, meaning God, the one that called us. He is with us to strengthen us and to help us and to uphold us. Amen. First Thessalonians says faithful, faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. We're just vessels that he's going to use. And Hebrews 12 and 2 says, look unto Jesus. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith, which means Jesus started this and he's going to finish it. Amen. So when we are troubled on every side because of the call, don't be distressed. It goes with the, test, the territory, uh, territory. So 2 Corinthians 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced, and this is one of the, the high marks of the true, the one that's really truly called, we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Those are uh, the, 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 the person that God calls will be full of integrity. They will not walk in craftiness nor handle the word of God deceitfully. And they will renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. They want the truth to be manifested. Then in three, it says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We don't preach ourselves. Verse five, for we preach not ourselves. We can't do you a bit of good but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The truly called have been called to bring you Jesus and none else. Verse seven, but we have this treasure 
this Holy Spirit, this gift in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And this is what the truly called go through. We are troubled on every side, and yet not distressed. And anyone that's truly called know exactly what I mean. Every side, from the enemy, from those closest to you, every side, we are troubled, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. We have mortified the flesh. We know that the flesh profits us nothing and you nothing. And so we want the life. So we have killed the flesh so that the Lord Jesus may live and be manifest through us, through our body. Verse 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. It is for your sake that we put up with all this uh, trouble on every side. Your sake, God called us to use us as a vessel, as his vessel. We are not our own. Suffering goes with the call. And so, and so when people come against the truly call, all they are going to do is first run to Jesus because we still got feelings. We are, we, we are distressed for a moment. We can go in there and he takes care of us. And then we pray for those that hate us and despitefully use us. And we do it for what? For your sake. Let me read that again. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal body, flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. We speak nothing but what the Lord tells us. No flesh is going to profit you anything. Knowing in verse 14, that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. That's our whole goal, those that are truly called. We are wanting to bring everyone with us to heaven. 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, we don't give up, we persevere. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. What an exciting call this in. This is the inward man is renewed day by day. Oh, we may look like we're dwelling on the outside, but I'm telling you, the truly called inward man is renewed by God day by day. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so we fix our eyes on Jesus we thank God for the call. It is a solemn call, but it is the best call that you could ever have. This is the, high, the highest call in the land. It's when God calls you to help souls. There are people that are called to help your body. There are people that are called to help your mind, but we are called spiritually to help the souls of men. 
and we thank God for it in Jesus name. Troubled on every side, yet not distressed for all things that we go through are for your sakes. Thank you, Lord, and have your holy way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.